This is an ABC News special report. Now reporting, David Muir. Good afternoon, and we come on the air this Friday afternoon. It is 2.42 here in the east, which makes it 10.42 in the morning in Anchorage, Alaska. And there is breaking news coming in that we're monitoring. A pair of back-to-back -back earthquakes, the first one measuring 7.0 right outside of Anchorage. People racing into the streets. There's already reports of significant damage inside buildings. Some of the pictures emerging that appears to be a, a newsroom right there that we're looking at. Uh, people heading out into the streets, uh, but then going back inside when yet another earthquake strike. Uh, struck 5.8 was uh, the size and scope of that earthquake. They did initial a an initial warning, uh, a tsunami warning triggered in Kodiak for people to flee to higher ground for fear of a tsunami. That tsunami warning has now been lifted. There were no reports as of last check of any deaths or serious injuries, but this did cause significant damage in and around Anchorage. You can see the pictures coming in. Some have been posted to social media already showing fractured roads, uh, bridges with damage to them, uh, grocery stores with items that have come off the shelves are now sitting in the aisles of those stores. Again, there were two earthquakes, one just outside Anchorage. The first one, a major quake, 7.0. People uh, fleeing buildings and homes, going out uh, for fear that those buildings would collapse. Uh, when they went back inside, that's when the second earthquake hit, a 5.8. I want to bring in our senior national correspondent, Matt Gutman, who's monitoring this from our Los Angeles Bureau. And Matt, what are we learning? David, there is significant infrastructural damage in and around Anchorage. That according to the local police there. You've just shown a number of images of damage inside, but we hear that roads are significantly impacted as well, including all of the roads or most of the roads leading to the airport. Now, the airport itself, we are told, has not sustained damage. The, traffic, the air traffic control tower was evacuated, but all five major airports in and around Alaska, Alaska's Anchorage, are closed down right now. Um, that as we do not have any reports of injuries or loss of life, as you noted, that is very important right now. But the governor has declared a state of emergency. They're calling in the National Guard and asking for resources at this point. We've also heard of some power outages. Um, telephone landlines are down in and around Anchorage. So this is a significant quake. And one of the things that seismologists, David, are looking at is not necessarily the magnitude, but the shaking, the intensity. And apparently it was felt very severely in Anchorage. A number of people weighing in across social media. Uh, the fear factor as the first quake struck and then hit again with the second one a short time after. Our thanks to Matt Gutman. And Matt mentioned the governor has called in uh, the National Guard for help. Governor Bill Walker also tweeting that after a major earthquake, I've uh, issued a declaration of disaster. I have been in direct contact with the White House. Major General Lori Hummel and I are now working with emergency responders to make sure Alaskans are safe. That tweet from Governor Walker just a short time ago. There was a tweet from Sarah Palin as well, uh, asking for prayers for Alaska, saying our family is intact, but our home is not. Uh, she went on to say, I imagine that's the case for many, many others. So thankful to be uh -huh. safe. That from Sarah Palin. And just to give you an idea of the chaos that broke out when these earthquakes uh, struck, this is a piece of audio coming in from air traffic control right there at the International Airport in Anchorage. These are uh, the folks at the radio tower actually communicating with pilots who were coming in for landing as this was happening. Listen to this. Please go around. Please go around. Is that for FedEx? FedEx 49. FedEx 49, heavy, go around. Going around, FedEx 49. Roger, sir, are you uh, planning to evacuate the tower? Airport 10, uh, we're disinfecting it now. It looks like part of shelling's come down and our equipment's everywhere. Air traffic controllers urging pilots to go around. You could hear the pilot there asking, are you going to evacuate the airport? Uh, we heard Matt Gutman report uh -huh. a short time ago that the airport does not appear to be damaged, although there is significant damage in and around Anchorage. You can see there uh, the cars off the road, uh, the aisles of the grocery store. Uh, there have been reports of damage to uh, several homes, to structures, to uh, highways as well and the bridges. I do want to bring in meteorologist Rob Marciano, who obviously knows quite a bit about this. And Rob, the USGS has 26 urban areas here in the United States that are listed for potential uh, significant seismic activity. And as you know, Anchorage, Alaska is on that list. Uh, it certainly is, David. And you hear about earthquakes all the time in the state of Alaska, especially along the Aleutian Island chain, which is along that rim of fire, which is where the Pacific uh, tectonic plate uh, converges 
with the uh, the North American plate. And we have all those volcanoes that are so active, and, and that's where we get a lot of earthquakes. But this is significant in that this earthquake happened right in the center of a metropolitan area. A major earthquake at, at 7.0 magnitude, and also a very shallow earthquake, David, at about 40 kilometers, so that shaking and, and potential damage is it felt even worse. So um, although we, we can expect to see earthquakes in this area uh, of this size about 14, 15 to 20 times in a century, uh, to have one of this size right basically in Anchorage, Alaska, uh, is. Uh, is quite significant with all the infrastructure, the infrastructure, the infrastructure damage, and, and that's what makes this particular quake, David, uh, the most startling. Yeah, no, no doubt about that. That's what makes this particularly rare is the size and scope near such a, a huge population area. About 300,000 people live in Anchorage. As Rob mentioned, Alaska, no stranger to earthquakes. In fact, it, Alaska averages 40,000 earthquakes per year with more large quakes than 49 other states combined. Uh, as you heard us report there earlier, uh, no reports of any injuries uh, or, or any deaths at this point. We are joined by Dr. Owen Alla, a surgeon who was operating when the uh, earthquakes uh, hit. And Dr. Owen, can you hear me? It's David Muir. I can hear you. Yes, thanks. Tell me what you what you heard, what what you witnessed. Uh, certainly, as you were in the operating room, and, and reassure us, obviously, that the patient's okay. Yeah, no, the patients are, are are great. You know, it's uh, our staff did a really good job taking care of all the patients. You know, we have a have a large uh, ambulatory surgery uh, center here and it's um uh, we had a, a number of different surgeries going on at the same time and everybody did a really good job taking care of everybody but you know one thing that's uh impressive is um how loud these earthquakes are i mean you, you uh you actually hear it starting before you actually feel it and it's almost kind of like a freight train is coming through but you know everything was you know the, the whole building starts shaking and um you know including all the instruments in the in the operating room you're right there in Anchorage? I am, yeah, downtown Anchorage. We know the population of Anchorage is 300,000. Dr. Owen Alla, thanks for joining us, and, and we're glad to hear that the patients are okay, but that gives you an idea of the scope of how this was felt, both in hospitals, uh, in schools. There are reports coming in from schools, uh, this appearing to be a, a newsroom there, uh, where there is significant damage inside, obviously one of the easiest places to get uh, images in for us uh, here at ABC. Uh, we do know that uh, schools, uh, there have been pictures on social media of darkened hallways, uh, infrastructure along roadways, significant damage. That's what makes it fairly remarkable that there have been no reports of any injuries uh, as of yet. Again, Governor Bill Walker declaring a disaster, asking for help from the National Guard, among other agencies. Uh, we heard from Sarah Palin, who again asked for prayers for Alaska. She reports that uh, there was damage at her home, guessing that there are uh, many others. I want to check back in with Matt Gutman, uh, who's based in California and who has covered uh, earthquake fears and certainly the number of earthquakes. Again, Alaska, no stranger to seismic activity. That's right. Alaska is no stranger. And one of the people who has been monitoring Alaskan earthquakes for decades is Dr. Lucy Jones. And I spoke to her specifically about this quake just minutes after it happened, David. And she basically said that seismologists and geologists focus on the intensity of the shaking. That's what caused all that freight train kind of noise that Dr. Allah was talking about. Um, there is so much shaking, the ground is moving, and in a level eight intensity, that's just one level down from the Northridge quake, which killed 57 people, nearly 9,000 people were injured, uh, caused $50 billion in damage in the same intensity as the 89 earthquake in San Francisco that rocked the World Series. That's the kind of shaking that was felt, and that kind of shaking can destroy older infrastructure. It can cause older buildings to collapse, single family homes. So so we are talking about something that is significant. And just to give you a sense of how significant it is, uh, Anchorage is right on the Cook's Inlet. That Cook's Inlet, according to Lucy Jones, probably widened by five to 10 feet just because of that first quake today, David. Matt Gutman with us here this afternoon as we watch this unfold. A pair of earthquakes outside Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, it happened 8.30 their time. Uh, we've been following reports of damage coming in for the last uh, couple of hours. It's 2.51 here in the east. Obviously, they're four hours behind us here in the east as they continue to look at the damage. This from the Anchorage Fire Department at this hour. The municipality is requesting that people only call 911 for significant emergencies. Obviously, they're being inundated. But again, no reports of injuries as of yet and, and no deaths. Uh, quite remarkable given the population center. This was uh, right in Anchorage. Again, two 
two earthquakes back to back, the first measuring 7.0. Many witnesses describing the sheer sound of this one man telling the Associated Press he was getting coffee when the entire building sounded like it was going to come down. He said we just had to get out. Uh, this was echoed in so many places. People evacuating when they thought it was safe. They went back in and then the second earthquake hit that one measuring 5.8. We will continue to follow this all afternoon long. Much more on our live channel and at abcnews.com and of course our team on this on World News Tonight. I'll see you a bit later right here. Good day. This has been a special report from ABC News. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.